everybody this is starting out bright and i'm noreen savage thanks so much for being here and you're in for a treat because katie le maurice is in the house before we get to katie i'm going to just introduce myself very quickly in case this is the first time we've met as i said i'm noreen savage and i got acquainted with bright line eating back in 2019 first of all i want to say i'm nobody official with bright line eating but the program has done a lot for me i got acquainted as i said in 2019 when my friend lori i happened to notice a post on her facebook page she said that she lost 57 pounds with a program called bright line eating if anybody was interested, they could just give her a shout and she would give you the scoop. So my hot little fingers got over to Messenger and I asked Lori what this was all about. And she told me about a book called Bright Line Eating by Dr. Susan Pierce Thompson. And in the book, Dr. Thompson talks about four bright lines, no sugar, no flour, three meals a day, weight and measured portions. And when Laurie told me that, I was sunk. I thought there is absolutely no way that I could yep. do any of that. And I was just shocked, really, that there weren't, you know, you couldn't have honey or maple syrup or anything. It just was no sugar, no artificial sweeteners, nothing, and no kinds of flour. But she piqued my interest, and we decided to go for lunch. We talked through our lunch I noticed what she was eating. It didn't look too bad to me. And by the end of that lunch, she convinced me of two things. One, to get the book. And two, to get into a group. And at the time, there was, uh, and it's still going strong, We Eat Bright With Lines. It's a private Facebook group. And now since then, there are many groups, including the BLE official group, which is right now on pause, but every once in a while opens up, and that's a public group. Starting Out Bright is associated with the Zoom chats, but there are many groups. And so I got into the group that Lori suggested, and I just sat and read and watched one transformation after another. People losing weight, like a lot of weight not just five or 10 pounds like I was doing every other month, but 50, 100, 150 pounds. And for the first time in a long time, I had hope rise in me because here I was sitting at 270 pounds. I had dieted for close to three decades. I snored every night, waking up my husband. My feet were swollen for probably a year. I was feeling neuropathy in my fingers and toes, and I knew diabetes was right around the corner for me. And at that point, I promised myself that if I did this for one year, I would do what my friend Lori did. I would post on Facebook, and I would help anybody I could. Well, I got going in July 2019, and so the next July 2020, I'm getting ready to post. Here I am. And I'm a Christian, and I I feel God say to me, Noreen, you can do more than that. 
you could connect people. Here it was now the time of the pandemic and everybody's getting on Zoom. And wouldn't it be just great if I could connect some of those people who gave me so much hope to those who were needing a hand and some information and a little bit of hope themselves. So that's how the Zooms got started. And one by one, I've been amazed. I've been more than amazed. I've been stunned <laughs> that people will say yes to a complete stranger <laughs> when, they, when they're asked to tell their story. And that's how Katie is. She wasn't a stranger to me because I saw her on the BLE official group as a moderator. And I watched her for a long time, but she was always so busy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do one more thing, but recently I asked her if she could be on Starting Out Bright, and she graciously said yes. We got together this past week to talk, and here she is, Katie Le Misere. Le <laughs> you got it. Yep. So, hi, Katie. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I always love to talk about Bright Line Meeting. Oh, gosh. And you talk about it well, just from... You're moderating in the group. It's really been a pleasure to be able to see you work your magic there as far as answering questions, stimulating conversation, and just really helping people. That takes a lot of time. I know that just from the starting out bright group with myself, wow. you know, Deb, who's here tonight, and Ed Pettit's on there a lot. A lot of people who are just really giving a lot of their time and talent. Yeah just their passion to help others. And so I appreciate that a lot. So anyway, I told a little tiny piece about my story, how I got started with Bright Line Eating. And if you could, would you just bring us up to speed? You can go as far back as you want, you know, to even like why you would even need BLE. Right. But if you could just go ahead and do that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to see all you here. And thank you, Noreen, for inviting me. This is always a happy thing for me to get to talk about Bright Line Eating. Um, so I, you know, in high school, I had poor body image, but I was a four sport athlete. And so I didn't, I, you know, as everybody often says, I wish I was as fat as I thought I was when I was 17 years old or whatever. <laughs> um, and then as a young adult, you know, went through college and maintained a, a pretty healthy weight would probably have liked to have lost 10, 10 pounds, 10, 15 pounds, but was fine. And then entered the workforce and worked in journalism and newspaper and worked evening shifts, you know, for 4 p.m. to midnight, stayed up late, ate a lot of fast food. My husband, we got married right after college and, you know, neither of us cooks. And so it was a lot of takeout and frozen pizza. And sorry if that is, a, uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> um, just all those things. And, you know, you have money for the first time in your life. So why not buy all the stuff that right. isn't all that healthy? So anyway, and, and started putting on, putting on weight slowly, um, but surely. And, and, um, and then in my late twenties, uh, we started to, we wanted to start, start a family and we were having no luck and it was found that I had endometriosis pretty severely. Um, but in those like five years of just sort of not knowing exactly what was going on, went into a pretty, pretty good situational depression and self-diagnosed I, I, Nobody ever said that, but I, I can look back and see that I was sleeping. I mean, I went to work at 4 PM and I would almost oversleep for work. So, you know, I would go to bed and just sleep through the whole day and, and wake up and eat something from the drive through or whatever. And, uh, gained a lot of weight pretty quickly in that time. I, we were also living on the East coast. I grew up in the Midwest, um, kind of felt like it was very far from, you know, my, my mom and dad and my sister and friends and family. And of course was happy to be there with my husband, but it just felt, felt a little foreign, felt a little far from what I grew up with. So, um, got up as high as 227 pounds. I'm about five foot seven. I'm a pretty muscular person. So I always told myself, Oh, you carry it pretty well. <laughs> some of those, some of those things. Um, but also knowing I didn't really feel very good. And, um, I was telling Noreen this the other day, but you know, um, my feet always hurt mm -hmm. and I, because I'm five, seven, I was thought, Oh, I have small, smallish feet for my height. Cause I only at the time was wearing like a seven and a half. And so I was like, Oh, well per square inch, my feet just have to carry, you know, more than like somebody else. So that must be why, I mean, just all the, all the stuff. And, um, so then, uh, close to my 30th birthday, as we were trying to get pregnant, 
thought, okay, we need to get as healthy as I can be. I did Weight Watchers and I had a lot of success with Weight Watchers because I'm a very cut and dry black and white person um, when it comes to that. It was very easy for me to stick with that for a time and lost some weight. And then we were lucky enough to be able to do in vitro and uh, got pregnant with our older daughter. And um, I was, I, I didn't get the weight off like down to, you know, what, you know, healthy BMI or Weight Watchers golden, golden ticket number or whatever, but I got back down to a relatively uh, healthy weight and I was running, I was exercising a lot. Um, And then we got pregnant with our second daughter that was, she was born in 2007 and then kind of went back into the cycle of gradually sneaking up, sneaking up, sneaking up. And, um, and so I had done Weight Watchers I had been exposed to ideas like bright line eating before, um, 10 day diet detox with Dr. Mark Hyman, which says uh, no sugar and actually has very, some, some lines, some ideas around even which sugary fruits not to have a lot of. So I don't think I could have bananas on that or something anyway, but you could have uh, non-wheat flour. So I got really into baking with almond flour. <laughs> it was oh, very, yeah. very good at, at figuring out how to make a, a bread-like substance with almond flour or whatever, because there are all these hacks, you know, anytime you say, I'm not going to do this, there's a hack that pops up in its place of, well, you're not doing this, we'll do this. And um, Whole30, which I did for a while, again, successfully, but I think a lot of them were, something was missing. You know, it would work for a time, and then something would happen or nothing would happen or, you know, it wouldn't come off quickly enough or I'd hit a plateau. So in the fall of 2018, I have a good friend who every Thanksgiving time, November time, puts out a post that says, tell me about something you have discovered or enjoyed or learned about in the past year. And it's always fun to look at. It's, you know, oh, I found this great shampoo or, oh, I found these jeans that make your butt look great or whatever. Sometimes it's really silly, a great nail polish or whatever. Yeah. And somebody said, I found Bright Line Eating and it completely changed the way I, uh, I completely changed my relationship with food. I wanted to get that word right because it was really well said. And I, it just stopped me. And I went, well, my relationship with food needs to be completely, completely changed. Um, so maybe I should look into this. So I think I Googled it and saw the lines and went, oh, no. <laughs> there's no, there's no way I'm doing this. And I was drinking, you know, three and four McDonald's Diet Cokes a day. And of course, that wasn't going to happen on Bright Line Eating. And I had given it up for three and four months at a time before. But then, you know, I go on vacation. What else am I going to drink if I don't drink Diet Coke? Right. Disney, mm. you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so that was in November. I got the book. I read it. It was just kind of percolating, percolating along with these other ideas about that. I knew other things had worked to some extent, um, signed up for a 14 day challenge, which Brightland Eating used to offer. Um, and, uh, my husband and I both got the flu and I, he was diagnosed with the flu. I might've just had detox flu and I will talk about that later, but, or what we call detox flu, but I felt miserable and was like, okay, but for those first five days, something was clicking. So then I just thought, okay, January 1st, even though it's in her book, Susan talks about, we don't need to start any healthy living thing on a specific day. You don't wait till Monday. You don't wait till January 1st, just do it. Um, but I, I, I decided to wait till January 1st, signed up for um, a boot camp that was being offered through Bright Lightning and, um, and just jumped right in and have not looked back. And I will say the detox hit me around day four. I woke up in the middle of the night feeling like I'd been hit by a truck again. And I think I thought, oh, I think I have the flu again. And then I kind of went, mm, this is weird that this is happening on the exact same day again. So maybe it's not that. And uh, but I was detoxing from sugar, flour, caffeine, and artificial sweeteners all at once in one fell swoop. So it was a lot, but something was working and, and, you know, just per, uh, prompted me to keep going with it, of course. And, um, and by the end of boot camp, I'd have to look at, but at the end of like an eight week boot camp, I think I had lost 24 pounds or something. That's something amazing. Like that. And so it felt like it was really falling. I was 46 years old when I started Bright Lane Eating. Um, and so something was working and working really well. So then I, I did that and stuck with it. 
And uh, my sister started doing it in March. My mom has done it. My dad has dabbled with it, you know, dads. Um, and I have many friends who have done it with, you know, a lot of success. And, um, and here we are, I'll, I'll be coming up on four years on January 1st. And it's just been a tremendous blessing in my life and has, has completely changed my relationship with food. It has renewed my faith in myself that I can, that I can do this thing and knowing the science of it, of why I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't do it before. And maybe I really just couldn't do it before yeah. um, because the, the deck was a little bit stacked. And um, so four years of no Diet Coke that, I mean, if that was all I got out of this, if you would have told 28 year old Katie that someday you would go without it for four years, she wouldn't believe you. She and just so, would not believe and you. So just to kind of stop right yeah. there about just the diet pop you're, and you're saying you're going to McDonald's for it, right? So yeah. Oh, yeah. Several times a day. Yep. And so yep. like this time too, that's involved to go and do this. And the money. I mean, and you the know. money. Yeah. But you know, the one thing that really shocked me, because that was one of my questions, right to my friend, like, you mean not even artificial sweeteners, because I yeah. didn't have the book. Or right. anything. We're just having yeah. a conversation. And I it just didn't make logical sense. But I will even say, like, I haven't experienced this week because, you know, this tickle in my throat, I've been chomping on cough drops because I needed something, yes, right. you know, to soothe my throat. But they're artificially sweetened. I mean, no sugar, but, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of them have like just no, you know, no sugar. Mm -hmm. And already I have felt like, oh, exactly what's in the book. Like, it's not... Okay, it's sweet, people. This is like a honey flavored. It's sweet, what you have in your mouth. Yeah. But your body knows it's not getting the goods. It's not getting the calories. Okay. So I have been looking for food. And I've it's taken yeah. all my willpower to just not eat other things this week, which yeah. is just yeah. crazy. So I can't even imagine four pops a day and what oh, that was doing yeah. for you. Yeah. Oh, well, and of course I was getting, you know, often getting things along with it that also weren't helping anything. But I will say too, um, even several months in to Brantline eating when I, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling drawn to candy. I wasn't feeling drawn to the, the pastas or the pizzas or anything like that. That Diet Coke was still scratching at my head. I mean, it really was. It, it, it tells me a lot about what they put into that to make it. So, you know, something that you just you crave. Well, when actually we were talking about that too, as far as even like the rebel part of you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you were saying something, I don't know if it was a book or what that talks about this industry yeah. of sugar. Yeah. So I never did look up the name of that. And I'm so sorry, but I, I think it was salt, sugar, fat. I think that's it. Salt, sugar, fat. And it talks about how food manufacturers which we could stop and talk about that for a second, but food manufacturers, the people who are making our food, they know this secret, secret ingredient, the secret sauce, the secret recipe to make you want more. And so there's a reason McDonald's sells their, their drinks for a dollar because the, the carbonation and the sugar or the artificial sweetener in it is going to make you want the salty thing. And then the salty thing is going to make you want this. And, it, you know, and so, I don't even know how far I was into Brett Lanini. And I thought those, those people, those, those corporations don't get to own my brain anymore. They don't get to decide what I'm doing with my body. And that's my rebel part for people who aren't familiar. There's a big part of Brett Lane eating that talks about that. We have these different parts that, you know, when, when we're feeling sad and something wants to comfort us, that's, you know, that part of us that is, is trying to, I don't know if takeover is the right word, but, you know, is trying to, to be in control. And there's the controller part and there's the rebel part that says, well, you can't tell me what to do. And, and I said, you know, if, if I've said all my young adult life, if someone would just say, you cannot, you are not allowed to eat broccoli and grilled chicken. <laughs> like, it would be like, I'll show you. <laughs> oh, yes, I can. You know, I mean, just like, don't tell me what I can and cannot do. Cause that's, that's a four way fire me up. What I've heard too, or come to believe about it, and I'm not really immersed in it that much, but 
these parts inside of us really are trying to help us yes. protect us yeah. or, or make yeah. us stronger, yeah. you know, like I'll right. show you. I'll show you. Yeah. So but, yeah, my rebel part comes out against the food industrial complex. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. Well, you had me, you had me for 46 years. You don't get me anymore. So. Well, that's a good part, especially when you're, when you think about like the science, the science piece that we both were talking about as far as, I know for me, I had learned a lot of these pieces before. I had heard about the radish experiment and I had heard about leptin and stuff. But in those first five chapters, there was just so much that got put together of the mm -hmm. science in the yeah. book, Bright Line yeah. Eating, yeah. that it just clicked. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, my sister was a psychology major in her undergrad and she called me, she was about five chapters in and she said, no one has ever made it make sense quite like this. And she said, I can't believe that I didn't, I didn't see all those things when I know the psychology of the brain and, and how these things work. And her, her kind of aha is very early when Susan says, you know, if we had a college system that 90% of people were failing out of college across the across the country and in, in you know state institutions and we would say hold on something is wrong here but that's what's happening with diets you know with the diet industry it's, it, you know that's their entire business model is we know you're going to fail you know we know this isn't going to work long term so for me to be coming up on 4 years is just astounding because I had, like I said, I'd had success with Weight Watchers. I had had success with Whole30. I, mm -hmm. you know, I thought the 10 day diet detox was really good. It felt very strict. And I think in a way it set me up. It got my brain to open up to the idea of, well, you did this thing before you can do bright line eating. You can try it. Um, and uh, it's just been, a, it's that those, those four lines that they come together in such a way that there's no, well, I can have this kind of flower, or I can have this, and my brain will find the ways, and we can talk about that too, you know, it's like right. a, that's a challenge. Exactly. Well, and the other big piece too, and you mentioned you were a four-sport athlete, mm -hmm. you know, we were, were talking about calories in, calories out, and this yeah. whole emphasis on the exercise piece, yes. Yes. along with the diet, and so yeah. now the willpower is totally depleted. Yeah. It's just oh, gone. Yeah. So what did yeah. you think about that when you got in and you realized that there was no exercise needed because oh. you were doing pretty hardcore, didn't you say I was, you yeah. did a half marathon or something? I ran a half marathon pretty close to my highest weight. Didn't, didn't, not only didn't lose any weight doing it, but pretty sure I probably gained over the course of the training for that because, well, I just ran a, you know, a 10 mile training run. I might as well go carb load before, after, and possibly during. No, you don't. It was during. purely <laughs> muscle. Yeah, it's all muscle. I'm very muscly. Um, so I had worked out until I read that part in Bradley Neen where she said, you know what, let's focus on the food right now and let's fix not whatever, fix it. You know, I don't want to offend anybody, but for me, it was fixing. It was fixing my relationship with food. And I put exercise aside. It was January. I live in Ohio. So it was easy to put exercise aside. Right. Yuck. Um, but before that, you know, you could tell, ask my friends, I, there was a place here that was like circuit training with a boxing emphasis. And my friend said, Katie, nobody, nobody worked out harder in that gym for those 35 minutes, nobody. And, you know, I would, I would do the, um, the dips that would hurt my shoulders and my shoulders would hurt for, you know, weeks. And I need my shoulders because I'm an editor and I got to be able to move my, move a mouse around and, and things like that. And just, just almost, you know, not almost, but punishing my body for, right. for either that I overate or that I was overweight or that I was going to, you know, to earn, you know, I, as we talked about the other night, you know, Weight Watchers is as, as beneficial as it has been, even for me at times, that idea of I can earn points to eat more by exercising was very dangerous for me. It did not work well with my, my brain science. And um, it was just a way to make something, make two different parts of my life sort of extreme. Well, if I work out to the extreme, I can eat to the extreme. You know, that wasn't a good message for me. So yeah, you can't outrun your kitchen. And, uh, and so now I walk, I walk my dog. We do not walk fast. She is a 10 year old dog and she likes to sniff things and 
Um, some days I bring her back home and then I go for a little more brisk walk. Um, that hasn't been happening as much lately. And that's okay. Like that's okay because there are ebbs and flows to my life. Whereas before, you know, to not get to, not to get my really intense workout and in was, was very scary. You know, that was something that would sort of upset my day of, well, now what am I going to do? And I, and I wasn't losing weight or if, and I wasn't, you know, that exercise wasn't getting me where I wanted to be. It just was sort of helping me maintain and still have this disordered relationship with food. And you're paying the money to have oh. the privilege to do it. <laughs> And I had a personal trainer. I met, I went and met with her three days a week in a small group. I had, I joined this, this gym. I had, um, I trained for that mar- half marathon. We, you know, my husband and I, I think the, the marathon entry fee was $125 each and we did it at Disney world, which, you know, twist my arm. We got to go to Disney, but anyway, that's in there. You know, yeah. All the money, um, all the energy, all the, all the frustration. Yeah. But I mean, you were, you did gain muscle. And so, yeah, so much muscle. You know what? A body while, we're, while we're talking about the body too, yeah. the I was I was really interested the way that you were saying the other night about the surprises that you had oh. from you know yeah from what I understand you lost the weight pretty fast like I did. that yeah. year more yeah. than sixty pounds yeah. right yeah. Yeah. So I went from 227. I set a goal weight. And should I talk numbers? Is that sure. I don't yeah. want to. Okay. No, that's so good. I set Susan says in the book, you know, think think out of out of what you think is the realm of possibility. Because I'm here to tell you I've seen it time and time again of people getting to that number and then and then surpassing it. And so I thought, oh man, I would love to be 150 pounds. I would just love to be 150 pounds. Weight watchers, I think the top of their range for a five foot seven maybe, maybe men or man or woman was 165. And I never got within shouting distance of that. You know, I would get to like, well, I shouldn't say shouting. So I would get to like the high 160s and just could not, maybe it was 162 even. And I could not get there. Oh, wouldn't 150 just be just, that'd be something. And I got there. I got there by mid-September of January of 2019 after starting January 1st. So that surprised me that it worked to that, you know, to that I don't want to say extreme, but to that level, um, I always have carried my weight in my hips and thighs and I'm wearing like size four and size two, six jeans, which I'd never, wow. never in my while, even, even as a teenager, I think I skipped right from like, you know, the kids sizes to like a, a nine, you know, um, or whatever. And, uh, so that was a surprise. My skin, I've, I, I've never had like bad skin, but my skin is so soft. <laughs> like, it's just really like, and I, I don't, I don't get breakouts or anything, but then the one I think that you're talking about was I was starting to have hot flashes. Um, so I was, you know, 40, 40, 46 years old. Yeah. And, um, I was starting to have hot flashes at night and, and they've gone away, like they've gone away. So when people tell you about sugar and flour, and all the things that science is teaching us about it now, um, I, I believe it. I believe it wholeheartedly. You know, that added sugar, that refined sugar probably shouldn't have a, a place in very many people's diets, at least certainly not to the extent that it does in the American diet. That's pretty incredible. All of yeah. those things. But the whole yeah. hot flesh issue is just yeah. quite amazing. Yeah. And, you know, you had said you were a crystal vaser in the beginning. And for mm-hmm. someone who's brand new. That means that it's like you're holding a crystal vase, but you're not the vase. <laughs> it's, no. it's that your program is completely bright, yeah. not, not a crumb out of out of order. Mm-hmm. And you you kept that up until mm-hmm. you didn't. And yeah. you know, I don't know if it was COVID or when it started, but yeah. you said that during those times, those flashes, those hot flashes might come back. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, uh, the idea of the crystal vaser is uh, a tricky one because I think when Susan was describing it, it was the more the idea, not that you're some perfect or holding even some perfect, but it's like, you've got this thing that is fragile and it is um, special and it's to be cared for and, and to be kind of cautious around, you know, you wouldn't start juggling with it. And in uh, late, late, 
January of 2020. Yeah, I'd been a year and almost a month. I started juggling with my crystal vase and I we went to the movies and I had some pop, popcorn and it went, it didn't, it, it didn't, I, I, I have never crossed, broken the added sugar line, added sugar sweetener line. And I have never crossed knowingly the added flower line, but I think I've had some sauces that one or both of those have snuck in because my body tells me right away, like, Hey, that's not what yeah. you've been putting in here and we don't want any of that. Um, and so then since that time, which is, you know, again, coming up on almost three years or yeah, um, I've gone through periods of, of, you know, squeaky clean, bright lines. And I've gone through periods of not, not eating the way that I would like to, but again, the sugar and the flour are for me and knowing, knowing my tendencies are just two that I'm, I'm, I won't say never, but I, you know, for today, I'm choosing not to break those lines because it's, to me, it feels too dangerous. The quantities and the in-between meals I have broken. And, uh, but then the nice thing about bright line eating for me, the miracle of it is that unlike other times, so if Weight Watchers, if I, you know, stopped losing or stopped going to meetings, then it was sort of, well, now what am I going to do? What what should I do? Should I try this thing? Should I try keto? Should I try a fast? Should I try cleanse? What should I, you know, grasping around? And now I know, no, you know, that tomorrow you're going to get up and you're going to eat this breakfast that you enjoy and is fulfilling and uh, provides the sustenance sustenance you need to get to lunch. And then you're going to do the same thing for lunch. And then you're going to do the same thing for dinner. And um, there's such peace in that, that I don't have to spend time spinning my wheels and beating myself up. Um, I give myself some grace and I go on to the next meal and make the next bright choice because that has, has worked so well for me for almost four years. Unlike all those other things that I've mentioned, that just, you know, or maybe, and maybe four a, a years. <laughs> yeah. And four years. Four. I mean, we said that four years is a presidential term for four years is college. Four years is the time between the Olympics. I mean, that is not an insignificant amount of time, you know, and, um, it's but incredible. then with that, like we, talk, we talked about too, like, but I'm also still just like a toddler for bright line eating because I have 46 years of, of wiring in my brain that is trying to get me to go back to those 46 years. So it really is like, oh, wow, four years, but also eh, four years, like you're, I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I'm still um, finding those challenges and, and um, you know, some days knocking them out of the park and some days going, oh, okay, that, that didn't work. Let's, let's do, let's do better tomorrow. Let's do better with the next meal. Well, let's talk about how you do you know, structure your program, because that was another big selling point you said, is Mm -hmm. that just the total structure. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I find so great, because, you know, I did not all of the things that you said, but definitely Weight Watchers, and Weight Watchers has helped a lot of people in, Mm -hmm. in its time. But I never found the structure to right. be because I was always running numbers oh. in my head with the points. And so that's a tough thing. And and if you're now saying, okay, if I exercise a little bit more, then I can have this right. after dinner, then okay, no. I'm, I'm off to the races because I have completely separated those two things. The exercises for the exercise and their benefits to my health and to my mental health and you know physical and emotional health but it's to get fresh air or to enjoy the leaves changing or to make my dog happy. Cause it really makes her so happy or to talk with a friend. We do that a lot. We, we, you know, before COVID we would walk side by side. Now we, we call each other and we've kept that up only because I think it's easier um, t- timing wise, you know, and um, uh, you asked me an original question. Oh, the structure of, of bright lining. But yeah. So um, I eat, almost the same. I eat the same thing almost every day for breakfast and for lunch. And, um, that's actually something that I picked up, uh, you know, years ago that it was a certain, um, gentleman who's now running for Senate in Pennsylvania, Dr. Oz, his talk show, he said, automating your food really helps. And, um, I've never been one to really get sick of food of a specific food. And so, um, I have the same breakfast, I have the same lunch, and then dinner is, is, 
you know, kind of depends on what, what my family, what we're going to eat and things like that. But um, well, you, the, you heard that about automating it, but how did you get to the point of knowing which food you were going to pick? Did you just yeah. say one day I'm going to have this and that was it or trial well, and error well, or what? Yeah, it's funny because I, I I know we talked about this. It's like when I very first started Brightline Eating, one of my friends saw that I was in a, a group or something and she reached out to me. She said, oh, I said at the time, my biggest sticking point was the breakfast grain because I was so used to carbs being the enemy. You know, you didn't have toast with breakfast. You didn't have cereal. You didn't have those right. kinds of things because on Weight Watchers, those were more points or whatever. So I thought, she said, can I help with anything? I said, I don't know what to have for a grain for breakfast. Like what's going to be a sustainable grain for me? She said, oh, try these overnight oats. And I tried them and I disliked them intensely. <laughs> I don't want to say hate, but I was kind of choking them down and just going, I, if I have to eat this every day, or if I have to even eat this whenever, I'm I'm not going to make it. This is, a, you know, I'm not going to stick with this. So I, my advice to people getting started is find the foods you like, and there are a lot of them out there. And so then for the first three, four, five months of Brightline eating, I actually, my breakfast grain was Triscuits because those are compliant. And I'd eaten too many rice cakes as like a teenager trying to diet. So I think I had like a kind of a mental block against rice cake. So there are some really good options, but they just weren't going to work for me and overnight oats would be great. So I had Triscuits and eggs and, and fruit. And that was my breakfast for three or four months. And then my sister, when she came on, she is a cook and she likes to try to mimic recipes or, you know, find new things to eat. And so she said, Oh, you've got to try this. And so it was Odie's and Noreen had them in the slideshow if you saw that, but it's, it looks like a pancake, but the, the grain in it is, is oats. And so that's my breakfast. And so how do you uh, make them? Is it pretty simple? Okay. It's very simple. So it's uh, four ounces of a mashed banana. So I just get out my scale and a bowl and weigh out the four ounces. And then you crack a raw egg in there. The first time I shared this recipe, I think somebody thought it was a cooked egg. It's like, no, it's a raw egg. You think of it like a, you're making a batter, basically. Okay. And so you stir that together. And you kind of get an eye for whether you need to thin it or not. Um, and so you can add a little bit of water. So most I ever really need is like a teaspoon, if that. Um, and then I put a lot of cinnamon in and I don't have any problem with that. But some people might have concerns about their cinnamon quantity, but I know exactly what I'm putting in. And, um, and then you do one ounce of, of um, I used to be old fashioned oats. And then I found some at Costco that were, even less sugar in them, which I thought was really weird, but it's all just raw oats. And you kind of let it sit, you know, you stir that all up and then let it kind of, um, I don't want to say congeal, that doesn't sound very appetizing, but you know, you kind of got to let the oats sort of soak, soak up the moisture a little bit. And then I just pour them into, um, you know, a preheated skillet and uh, um, it, like it usually makes about three and then you serve it with two ounces of uh, fruit on the side. And, you know, if you have a banana sitting there or, or blueberries, but whatever fruit you want and it could be a vegetable too if you wanted to for that matter because it could be you can swap your fruit you could have vegetables in place of your fruit so that's just a very filling meal oh and then you get an extra half protein I was going to say I'm missing yeah. one half of a protein okay you know, so absolutely. Is that yes that you've only got the egg so far as your one half of a protein so you need another half of a protein so I know when I first started I just drizzled um a half serving of peanut butter, like you can heat it up in the microwave. And mm -hmm. I can't think of if this peanut butter for protein is two ounces, right? So we would be half one, one oh. half of that would be one ounce. Yes. But now I do a yogurt uh, that I mix with, I have an extra little bit of protein at breakfast because I'm of, of maintenance. But so yeah, so I, I have that for breakfast, and it's really filling. And it's, um, it tastes good, you know, and my husband even enjoys them, you know, so they're not the most bland thing in the world or anything like that. I think they're really sweet and really good, but you know, some of that's a taste, but what, do you, what do you nuts. say to someone who says, well, you're having nuts every day? Yeah. Basically? Yeah. So for me, and you'll see this, anybody who's new or not new, you'll see this a lot in some of the different, um, forums that people say, well, you can't have you know, you should only have peanut butter so so this frequently or bananas are high sugar, you should, you know, natural sugar, but you should watch that. For me, personally, and, and it could be a problem for some people, but it wasn't for me, I have bananas and peanut butter, basically every day as part of my breakfast. And I lost that weight really fast. And I've maintained it since. 
And it's not a race, you know, that's just it too. Like, yes, you want to feel as good as soon as you can, but nothing really changes that much when you hit maintenance, when you start to do the maintenance dance or when you hit your goal weight or your bright size body or however you would like to think of it. And so I wanted to enjoy the food, you know, and then there's the, the thing of like, if it's lighting you up too much, of course, then that's something you have to really examine. But for me, that's not been a problem. And, uh, and I don't, I don't spend a whole lot of time. About well, I'm that. also missing two more ounces of fruit. Did yeah, I you have the two that? ounces of fruit on the side. Oh, okay. Cause I was yeah. thinking you could, you put blueberries in that too, but you put it on the side. So okay. I think you probably could. I think that the, the challenge would be like, does it mess with the consistency? Cause you want the, okay. you know, the pancake, the ODs to be able to cook through and everything, but sure, certainly. And then people have taken what is basically that, that, that recipe and done things like you can bake it as a loaf kind of thing. You know, some people add baking, whichever baking powder sugar, mm-hmm. I don't bake, so I don't know. But, um, because when I started, you weren't supposed to use baking soda and baking, sh- uh, baking powder. So I don't use them. <laughs> Those were my rules at the beginning. And I, when I see a recipe with that in it, I don't do that, but that's just me. So everybody finds their different kind of thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I use that in like muffin bakes all the time. Yes. Yeah. So I want to quickly go over what is this lunch that you always use yeah. too, because you're yeah. using it almost every day too. Yeah. And it brings up another issue because it's cheese. I have, I have, um, my grocery store carries these, uh, that I, I could go get the brand name, but it's like the cheese folios. If you've seen those at at Costco or at the store, but these are a little bit smaller. And so they usually weigh out to more like seven eighths of an ounce or one ounce, as opposed to, um, those folios are usually the ones I get are like one and a half. So you have to start cutting them up and everything. So I do. Um, half my protein is an ounce of cheese and half my protein is two ounces of like turkey breast or chicken. You've got to read those labels, y'all like there's hidden sugar, maple syrup, uh, sweet, all sorts of stuff in those, in those, uh, prepackaged lunch meats, but they are out there that you can find a, a compliant one. Um, and so that's, I roll that up and it's, and you could put lettuce in it. You could put onions, you could put peppers, I'm sure tomatoes, you know, make it fancier, but I'm, I'm not fancy. So I just roll it up and have meat and cheese and it's like a charcuterie or something, I guess. And then, um, I have six ounces of a cut up cold vegetable, uh, usually cucumbers, sometimes celery or carrots and two ounces of hummus as my fat. And then I have a fruit and sometimes it's an apple and I always eat the whole apple, but sometimes it's grapes and I measure out six ounces of grapes. Um, sometimes when things are, you know, running low with the house. Maybe it's another banana. I just do not worry about those kinds of things. And other people need to worry about them. And that is completely up to them. And so how much time does that spend on your brain? None, <laughs> none, none, except to make sure I have it on hand. You know, that's, that's my the amazing the other, part. Yeah. Oh. The other day we were down to one banana and we were going to bed and I said to my husband, do not eat that banana. Like I've put post-it notes. <laughs> On, on the last of something. If I know when I wake up and there's not a banana there, I'm going to be a little panicky and have to probably go to the store and buy bananas. And I don't it's want just, to do that. You know, the whole thing, like you prep, you, you just prep at the time because you work yep. from home yep. and you're there yes. to be able to do that. But you yeah. know, and there's just, there's just really not a thought. And for no. me, I've gotten that automation of like, I just pack my lunch for the next day. Yeah. And I started yeah. with writing everything out and it actually yeah. went to packing everything. To me, smart, it worked yeah. better. Yep. And so again, you have to find your own way. Yes. I think the, the whole premise is you're planning it. Yep. You know, and I, and I was very diligent about writing it down and committing and I had a buddy or my, my sister and I were, when, uh, you know, I would commit my food to plan to her. And then I separated it down because I was like, this is just a waste of paper. I mean, the exact same thing every day, you know? And, um, and when I feel wobbly, when I feel like my lines needed, I, I go back to the writing it down because that there is something to that, but, um, yeah. So you do lots other writing there. like journaling or anything like that? I don't. I started off doing it. My th- I think my Facebook posts and those are, have become less frequent since uh, I've just been working a lot. But I think those come about as close to, to journaling. But um, I did at the beginning. I had a five year journal and, you know, I pick it up every now and then. Well, it's interesting that you say that about the journaling that, you know, the Facebook post, because I yeah. remember I was maybe like five months into this. 
Mm -hmm. And I was, I was in the group every day that we write with lines group now yeah. I'm in the starting out bright group, but I was in there every day. And I finally said, guys, I got to come clean. I am not journaling. I'm yeah. not, I'm not doing, I'm not writing things down. I don't mean the food at that point. I was actually writing the food, but I wasn't writing a journal and some kind soul goes, Doreen, you're in here every day. You're yeah. writing. You're yeah. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you're traveling right along with us. And I'm right. And they said, this was what was really important. It says journaling is not one of the four bright lines. No, it's not. It's advisable and it's recommended, you know, and it's going to help you in the long run to get these mm -hmm. words out somehow, right. maybe right. as part of community too. Yeah. But that really stuck with me because when it gets right down to it, it, it is the four bright lines yeah. that you, you just cannot sway from that. Yeah. And I'll tell you, you know, when you first get started, um, especially, you know, if you are part of one of these groups or whatever, it's like, well, do you have your five-year journal? Do you have your food journal? Do you have your gratitude journal? Are you meditating? Uh, do you have a buddy? Do you have a mastermind group? Do you have, and it's like, okay, I can't, I can't, I don't have the bandwidth for this, you know, and somebody, I think Susan has like likened it to, you know, trying to take a sip of water out of a fire hose. It's just this full blast of information and excitement and all that. And it's like, take the essentials which are the four bright lines and focus on those and anything that is in service to those in your life at that moment, incorporate to the degree that you can incorporate them and right. still have those in service of your lines. Anything else you can push to the side, maybe forever and maybe just for now. And for me, at the beginning of um, bright line meeting, I wanted to try meditating, but it had just never been a thing that had stuck for me. And so I didn't do it. And then I signed up and then I uh, did a different boot camp in um, the fall that year. And then I did. And I started a pretty, pretty healthy meditation routine that was really good. And my daughter, you know, said, Oh, my mom used to yell and I started meditating. That made me laugh. So I was like, well, one, I still yell. And two, it's probably because I feel better, not just specifically because of the meditating, but I'm, I, it's nice that you've noticed this change, <laughs> whatever you want to attribute it to, but also you, you know, she had become a little easier to deal with as she got older, whatever, you know, but it always made me laugh. It's like, Oh, mom started meditating. She stopped yelling. Like, <laughs> whatever so, it takes. So whatever it takes. And so, you know, I, I, I would never want anyone to feel like, and you do see that in the, in the different Facebook groups of, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not journaling. I'm not doing it hundred percent. I'm not doing it all the way. Right. I'm not doing it the way this person is. Hey, the way you're doing it is the way you're doing it. And, and nobody should be worried about, you know, trying to keep up with or trying to monitor anybody else. Goodness gracious. We've all got more things to worry about than that. Absolutely. I mean, especially in light of what we've all gone together through, yes. you know, just even getting through COVID. I mean, yeah. the very first part of it, I was just so grateful that I was in, I I had this knowledge of bright line yes. meeting. Yeah. <laughs> it actually worked out better for me because I wasn't tempted for restaurants or anything like right. that. Right. So, what, oh, yeah. so I want to ask you that though. What, you know, you said you love Disney. You did a half marathon. Do you travel much or yeah. you know, do you eat out? Like how do you manage that? Yeah. So um, this comes up a lot. Um, I have a, a Sandy Sharp who would, would be on this with to cheer me on. She said, but she's traveling and, and she's a huge bright spot in bright lining everyone I think most people know who Sandy is but anyway yes we uh, I, she was on starting yes, out right that's right and uh she and I talk uh we used to talk every morning at 6 a.m and then our schedules changed and so now we try to catch each other around lunchtime and we both have had some things but anyway um Noreen what was the question well, just like even traveling or restaurant hands, yes you have any yes. so she and I talk about the eating out and for my family Eating out is how we spend our like discretionary income. It's kind of a, a thing that we do as a family. I'm not a cook. My husband's not a cook. Um, we can make do, but it's not a thing that we, you know, so when we go out to eat, we want to be able to do that. And, and for the first couple of months of Brightline Eating, I wasn't because I knew for me that that would be a challenge and I didn't, I wasn't ready for it. But then I finally had to start to say, you know what, I'm missing, I'm going to miss time with my family if I, if I really never eat out again. So yeah, 
I've been kind of impressed at how easy it is to find a bright meal. And yeah, sometimes it's, it's a grilled chicken on a salad and, um, and that's okay. You know, that's yeah. great. And uh, sometimes it's, you know, steak and, and two vegetables. And it, it is it, is it 14 ounces of vegetables? Probably not. But is it probably higher in fat than if I ate at home? Yeah. So I kind of got to give myself a little bit, you know, I do the one plate rule and things like that. And yeah, um, when we travel, uh, we've, we've been to Disney two or three times since, um, since I started Bartlett eating. And that first it was a June trip in 2019 and I had intended to break my lines because there is this place in Epcot that is the, in the Italy pavilion and you order, sorry, everybody, but a pizza that's literally the size of the table. And it's the mezzo Metro pizza and it's an event for our family. And we, you know, whatever. And I thought, well, if I'm not going to eat, then what size are they going to get? And how is that going to impact their enjoyment? And I mean, I even talked about it in the Brightline eating community and a couple of coaches were like, it's a pretty risky game you're playing there. You know, I mean, they were very kind about it, very gentle. And uh, the closer it got, I was like, I really, I don't want to risk this. And I also thought, and I, and I now know this to be true that I would probably have felt so crummy from doing that, that I wouldn't even have enjoyed. I would have just seriously probably spent the rest of the day (laughs) either in pain or in a bathroom. Sorry. But, um, so we, we figured it out and I think I got a grilled chicken breast and some beautiful vegetables and, and, and really actually got to enjoy my family's enjoyment and, and got to be more present in that moment than I had been any previous time that we had done it because there was no food chatter of, well, should I eat that last piece? What if I, what if my kid wants it? Oh, they're not going to eat that crust. I can eat that crust. I mean, to, to be so completely in the food and to not be able to be in the moment with my family on vacation, you know, that was really eye opening. And I totally get that. Yeah. And so well, that first vacation, when I was still, you know, uh, in weight loss phase, um, I came home, I think I was, I think I was two and a half pounds lighter than when I left. So between the walking and the sweating and the, you know, and it stuck, it wasn't like, oh, it popped back up or anything. And, and I was a person that on vacation, if I only, only gained five pounds on a week vacation, I considered that a victory. That was a good thing. For sure. So it was probably usually closer to eight, nine, you know, the worst ones, 10. And it's not all about the numbers on the scale. It's, it's actually almost not at all about the number on the scale, but you know, that's at least one way to measure. And uh, so, yeah, I've been able to successfully travel. Um, Disney world was actually oddly easier than like the Jersey shore. <laughs> Because my family's from, my husband's family's from Pennsylvania and they always go to New Jersey, Ocean City, New Jersey. And the first time we went there, I was like, oh, this is actually harder. So I now know to kind of pack and, and be ready and uh, for those contingencies. Wow. But it's doable. Well, it's I as doable as anything. Yeah. I can't believe the time. I do have a couple of quick questions. The first is, and I, and you probably answered a lot of it, but Besides the surprises, have you had any non-scale victories? Like you're yeah. saying, it's not just about the scale. Yeah. Have you yeah, had so any that you really would like to share? Sure. Um, my feet don't hurt anymore. That's that's like wonderful. So, um, and my dad actually was the first one to point that out to me when I lost weight originally, like on Weight Watch. She's like, I bet your feet don't hurt anymore. And I was like, what a weird thing to notice. And I was like, you know what? They don't. Um, it's really nice to know that, you know, as the seasons change, um, my clothes are just going to fit. I don't have to go out. I don't have to go in the closet and be upset that, oh, those jeans don't fit or those shorts don't fit. It's, it's all there. And it's, I don't have to, you know, buy new things or panic, panic shop for vacations, which I had done many, many, many times in my life. Um, all those shorts that fit before don't fit now, you know? Um, so that's been a really nice non-scale victory. And I, the energy, you know, um, the calm, like the fact that your teenage daughter notices that you're not as, you know, whatever high strung as you once were, that's, that's something teenagers don't notice a lot. If you don't have kids or don't have teenagers in your life, I'm here to tell you they're kind of focused on themselves. Um, and God bless them. They're wonderful. But, um, okay. and I do have two great yeah. kids, but, and then, um, my sleep, my, I mean, you know, since I don't have the hot flashes, I sleep like a log. And I know that at my age, that is not a given because I have a lot of friends, including my sister who struggles with insomnia terribly. Um, but my sleep has never felt better. And, um, 
Yeah. Just that energy. Wow. My husband said, do you, are you tired? I said, no. Cause I get up at like five 15 every morning. Cause my daughter's school day starts so early and I like to have a little bit of peaceful time before that. So, you know, yeah, some days I get a little tired or whatever, but it's like not anything like I was before when I was sleeping so late that I was almost oversleeping for a four o'clock in the afternoon shift. That's crazy. Amazing. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's really a gift. Sleep yeah. is a gift. It is. For sure. I know. I don't take it for granted. I really don't. I really no don't. No kidding. That I have had. I don't even like to that. hear about insomnia. I'm like, I don't want my brain <laughs> to know that that's an option. No. no. <laughs> Here we don't. are. The last question. <laughs> okay. So somebody's going to listen to this and thank you for letting me record it. Um, yeah. What would you say to those who are here tonight and and to someone who is just really thinking, can I do this? Yeah. Should I give Bright Line Eating a try? What yeah. would you say to them? I would say, yes, please, please try it. I think 30 days. Um, I think once you would hit that 30 days, you would know that there's no going back, but you know, 30 days, can you do it for 30 days? Can you try it? Um, give yourself the chance to see what life is like on the other side of the food and the chemicals and the food industrial complex controlling us. And I know I sound a little conspiracy theory, but it's anyway. Um, and, and if you, you know, you might have to fake it till you make it. I, I do think there's a part of it where you trust what's set forth in the book and what's set forth by the communities and people are here and ready to help you and ready to embrace you and kind of pull you across when you doubt yourself. Like we're not doubting you. We know you can do it. So yeah, um, it's totally doable. I am not special. I was eating, like I said, I was drinking four Diet Cokes and everything that went along with those. I mean, and it wasn't just fast food. It was snacks. It was sugar. It was, you know, ice cream. It was pints, you guys, pints. So I am not somebody who went from like, oh, I was eating a whole foods, you know, clean diet. And I just merged into this. Like I was so in the food, you know, and if I can do it, anybody, I truly, truly believe anybody can do it. And I've got a whole list of friends who, who've proven that to be the case and new friends that I've made through Brightline Eating. You know, there are thousands of us out here who are, you know, banging this drum. So it's so worth it. It's so we, worth it. We want to just hand out cards, you know. Yes. I mean, Please. I do. <laughs> like, you know, Shauna Murph, Shauna Murph did that. She bought cards thinking she was going to get asked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope Shauna hears this because it was yeah. just amazing. And yeah. she said, you know how many I handed out? None. <laughs> Yeah. Like really, I mean, it, it comes up because I'll say, "Oh, I don't, I don't choose to eat, you know, this or that," and people say, "Oh, what's that?" And then they kind of hear a little bit about it, and they're like, "No." I mean, because I think that's everybody's first. Instinct. It seems okay. impossible, but once you get into it, it yeah. it's just so amazing. Well, anyway. Katie, I can't believe how the time has gone. Mm -hmm. You, you're I'm just shouting. amazing. And <laughs> thank you so much for thank sharing you. your story. Yeah. Do you have any last words for us? Um. I don't think so. Community. I wrote down community. This community, like I just said, though, it's so fabulous. There are so many out there. Um, Noreen has done this amazing service to offer this up. And, and, you know, there's this whole catalog of people that if my story doesn't resonate with you, I guarantee you somebody's in their will. Um, I was just re-listening to Patty Lyons because she's somebody that I helped get yeah. started with this. And I mean, she's got a daughter with severe disabilities she works out of her car she and she's lost I mean what was it Noreen 200 it's, something pounds it's I, amazing I, I, yeah you know started in the high 300s and she weighs 130 it's crazy so it's out crazy, there the amazing. community is there to support you and and love you and and believe in you when you don't believe in yourself you know really absolutely I all of the all of the above underscored right. so I just, again, thank you, Katie. And thank you, everyone, for being yes. here. I so appreciate it. And I'm going to close as I do each week. Good night. Stay bright. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Good night, everybody. Thanks. So, Katie, how would you like to play Three Question Thursday? Yes, please. Let's give All it right. a go. Okay. Does everybody have another hour? Because I do have to talk. <laughs> oh, we'll keep you know, just at the end, the tail end of what we were talking about, you said sometimes you have to fake it till you make it. And it reminded me about mantras. Oh, yeah. Did you, do you have a favorite mantra? 
Or yeah. So, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So mine has developed over time. It's gotten a little lengthy, but when I'm at my highest self and I'm, I'm really, you know, locked in on bright line eating, I will sit down in front of my food. I don't eat in the car anymore. I almost never eat in the car unless I really have to. And I don't eat on the go and I don't eat at my desk, but I sit down at my table after I've made my easy food and I take a couple deep breaths and I center myself and I say, I'm grateful for this food. I trust it will nourish and sustain me until my next meal. I'm so thankful for Bright Line Eating and I'm so proud of my commitment to it. I accept this bountiful and beautiful way of life as my way of life and I will not push the limits. I've come too far to go back now. Wow, I love that. And I, the, I started as the first piece about my commitment to it. That was where it ended. And then Emily August, who's a fabulous bright lifer, uh, she had this part about the bountiful and beautiful food and your way of life. And I thought that's, I like that too. So yeah. Well, that's that. going to go in the starting out bright group for sure. Okay. That's okay. fantastic. Um, you know, you mentioned about a horrible detox, at least yeah. on the, the sugar-free pot. I think yeah. that was probably the connection. Maybe that's caffeine too. Yeah. In there. Yeah. yeah. Now looking um, back, how has that detox served you? Do yeah. you ever look back and think, well, I don't want to do that again? Or what what do you yeah. think? Those first couple of weeks when I, you know, when you're when you really are kind of white knuckling it, you really have to get through those first three to four weeks, I think. It just feels like you're learning so much and it's it's all very different. And different can be wonderful, but different usually is challenging, at least for me. I would think back on that night that I woke up at about four in the morning. My kids were all still on winter break. I had no reason to be awake. And I felt like I'd been hit by a truck. I really, I thought I had another terrible, it was like the worst case of body aches from influenza that I'd ever felt. And I would think back to that. And I would think two things. One is I don't want to go through that ever again. I do not want to feel like that on, uh, based on something I've done to myself. And two, if I felt that miserable when it was coming out of my system, what was I feeling along the way that I just ignored? And you and I talked about this, like how many years did I ignore the sing signals that now I feel immediately if something sneaks into a sauce that I thought was compliant, you know, or something, something sneaks in um, when I get out to eat and it's like, oh, I didn't realize that had something in it. And it's like, my body was telling me these things for years and I just ignored it. You know, and so that detox, I, I was really for a long time able to physically tap into that, 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 you know, that memory, that muscle memory of just how bad that felt. So that really did serve me really well. And I think that's where journaling, I actually did write about that in my five-year journal at the time. Um, I think for people who journal, I think you have to write down the good and the bad. I think that kind of bad can really be a, a touch point that you reach back to when you're feeling a little, a little challenged. And I want to say about the journaling, because I had said earlier, I wasn't journaling like, uh, you know, everyday journaling. Yeah. Well, recently, I got a buddy just to make myself write in the five year journal, because, mm -hmm. well, I say, recently, it was last year, but now I'm seeing the fruits of my labor, because now yeah. I have something to look at. Yeah. Last year, and I love it. Yeah. I yeah. just love it. Yeah. So I definitely would encourage people to journal, but yeah. the four bright lines is the primary thing that's, you know, yeah. we really have to worry about. Okay. Well, one thing I don't think we talked about tonight, but we did the other day, and that was you brought a memory up about sneaky eating. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you said something about, you know, you'll feel that come up. If you're right. a home alone, yeah. those kind of things. Yeah. How do you yeah. deal with that? How do you do you take steps to avoid yeah. you know what could happen in yeah. sneaky eating? So some of that is just a lot more mindfulness, and that has come about just even in the past couple of weeks. And um, I didn't share this earlier, but my daughter, just my older daughter left for college uh, mid-September. And so that's been a real adjustment in our lives. We're a very tight-knit family, as I think most of us are. And so her being gone has been a big change. And uh, of course, we're so happy that she's loving college and she's off where she's supposed to be, but it's like, wait a second. So I really let myself, um, you know, be sad. And, and I was at 
there were times where I was having those sneaky eating thoughts and, and along with the sad and maybe, you know, all the different things was, was doing the, the between meals eating. And that was, you know, it didn't feel very good and uh, certainly wasn't how I want to follow my lines. And so even in the past, you know, you and I talking the other night really helped me realize of like, okay, well, some of that comes from, and my sister and I have talked about this too, but uh, when we were kids, my mom was a teacher and my dad was a self-employed carpenter, but the rule was you could not eat when there wasn't an adult in the house because my dad used to eat really fast and he would choke. And there was a time where he felt like he was very close to death. And my grandma's, you know, in his mind saved his life by whacking him on the back. So his thought was, if nobody's home to do that, my kids are going to die if they eat. So instead of following the rule, we would eat like fast and sneaky. And then you get all this emo, you know, that energy coming at you. So when my family's gone, you know, when my daughter's, at, my younger daughter's at school and my husband's at work or out of town, like he's been since last night, cause he travels for work a lot. It's like, Oh, I can eat. Nobody will know. It's like, well, and does anybody care anyway? Like these but people you don't know, care. And that's the integrity. Right. But I mean, like, who am I sneaking it from? You know, right. it's like my dad used to care. And it really was like a, a rule that if he caught, you know, caught us, it was, it was a stern talking to of like, I told you guys not to do that. It's because I care about you, whatever. So you felt like you got away with something for this. Nobody, my family doesn't care what I eat and don't eat. You know, they really don't. They just want me to feel good and be happy and healthy. And so it's right. like, who am I, who am I sneaking? Who am I, who am I, how am I, right. what am I getting away with? You know, and yeah. so talking that out with you is like, oh yeah, what am I, what am I getting away with? Nothing. I'm a grown woman. I can eat whatever I choose to eat. Yeah. So yeah, that's wow. helped me. And I don't, I don't do very well with the emergency action plan. I have it. I have one in my phone and my notes, but I, uh, it's not a habit stack that I'm fully. Uh, and again, I'm a toddler. I'm just, a, I'm just a little kid in all this. And yeah, so you're only that's something four years that in. I'm only four. I'm not even four. And so maybe by the time I'm almost five, I'll have a better emergency action plan, but <laughs> that's tomorrow. Okay. What a great <laughs> What a great time. Yeah. Thank you again so much for sharing My your pleasure. story. And yeah. thank you for playing Three Question Thursday. Yes. It was a blast. Yes. <laughs> I saw somebody ask about writing that down. Should I oh. write that in the chat or what should oh, I do? Bring? The, the uh, mantra, mantra prayer type thing? Yeah. I will have it on the slideshow. So when okay. this goes to YouTube, it'll have it. But I'll also put it in the Starting Out Bright group. That's just okay. great. Okay. It's wonderful. Okay. Thank so, you all. Anyway, thank you so much. Thanks. Stay bright. Good uh, night. Thanks so much, Marie.